the get-go. Uh, I don't know, and I'm not going to talk about everything you want to know. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm very open for questions. We've run into, made mistakes over the 20 years of doing it that uh, we can answer most of your questions and probably know where to get answers for the ones we can't. As he said, I, uh, we started Prepare the Way. It's something that the Lord just had us start uh, December 12th, so we've been on a fast track. We've lived a life of preparation since the early 90s. I actually got started on this uh, course back in November 92. I read a book called Bankruptcy 1995. And it talked about, it was, it was a commission uh, by Congress to do a study. And the net result is that they came up uh, reporting that they thought the, the American economic system would go belly up by 1995, uh, by 97 at the latest. So I read that in November 92 and just got a sick feeling in my stomach. I was, lived in Dallas and I just saw a picture of being in the middle of five million people going nuts and being ignorant because I didn't know how to grow food, store food, uh, treat water. I knew nothing. I had just always, um, you know, gone to the store or whatever. Sorry. <laughs> Wrong color on the other side. Okay. Okay. So anyway, uh, I started on a fast course. Uh, that was November of uh, 92. And by March of 93, we had uh, located land outside of town. We actually landed uh, in Arkansas. And so for five years, uh, we traveled every weekend. On Friday night, we'd go and then spend the weekend working with a crew to develop an area that was self-sufficient and uh, just read and took in information like crazy to, uh, to not feel ignorant. And five years later, we had gardened for five years, we'd made mistakes, we'd tried raising all kinds of animals, we'd, we, and we'd pretty much figured it out. And the, so the rest of the 90s, uh, we just practiced what we believed. And then into the uh, uh, early 2000s, uh, we ended up on uh, living on 300 acres. That, uh, and that is where we really refined we grew all of our own food. We were off the grid. We had enough uh, food and supplies to last us for uh, 20 people for two years. Um, and we just lived that way for, for eight years until the Lord said, move to Kansas City. And it was a shock to me. I mean, it was our utopia. We thought we were going to die there. So um, anyway, at, that was in uh, October of... Uh, 2004. Just to tell you the window I'm looking through, I go a little bit into my story. Um, I know you want to learn about food storage, and I promise you I'll get there. But I just learned about a month and a half ago what's at the core of the reason why I'm sitting here talking to you and trying to empower you. I was at a, uh, I was asked to speak at a seminar on rest, and, and they asked me to speak on food story, uh, on uh, preparation, and what that had to do with rest, and that peace is at the core of true rest and rest in the Lord. And it's just one more avenue of having peace. But at this conference, there was a, a, a man, he, is a, he was a personal coach and a business coach, and right in front of our eyes, in five minutes, he Took some, he took a lady through a process. He was asking everybody in the room what they do. This lady said she sold books on Amazon. He asked her, what kind of books? She said, all books. He said, why? 
<laughs> and she said, to raise money for a charity. And I said, yeah, but why? And, and so he said, no, why does anybody come to your website to buy books? You know, there's thousands of people doing that. And in the process, he took her through question after question. He found out that she wanted to uh, support the needy. And he said, why? He just took her. And he took her down to the root core through a series of 10 questions to where she got very, very specific what her core message was. She had met a lady uh, that was uh, a foreigner that was trying to get a green card. She couldn't get a green card, so she couldn't do what she wanted. And so she got uh, went into depression, got on drugs, and was uh, in a bad way for about six years. She finally got out of it, though, and at this point, recovered the point of being a uh, junior high school teacher in, in the inner city, actually helping to uh, help people that were in her place. And this lady had a heart for that. And then he told her right in front of us, he says, now tell that story and people will line up to buy books from you. So I took that to the inner core and was wondering why why am I in preparation? And the net result was that I came up to the point where I remember as an 11 year old kid, our father, my father left. I had a younger sister, older sister, my mother. Well, he left, took the car. My mother was a church secretary, didn't make hardly anything. And we went, I had to pay with paper out money, two house payments for two months. And we went a period of three weeks where we had like two pounds of beans to eat on. And I said vows at that young age that I wasn't ever gonna live like this again. I didn't care what I had to do. I wasn't gonna live like this again. Now since I've, I've broken those vows, but my core message is I am never gonna live there again. I see troubled times coming. The Lord has spoken some to me about it and I just don't want to see anybody go through those times. So me in front of you is my effort of hey, saying, hey, wake up. The signs are coming. Uh, the signs are there. Things are coming that uh, unless you give yourself choices now while you can, you, uh, you'll have trouble. I'm sorry. Go to, go to the uh, second slide. Are we on a PowerPoint? All right, I'm sorry, somebody get Chris. Okay, I'm gonna continue on. So anyway, this is about food storage, but, and y'all have heard plenty by now on why you need to prepare. But I mean, the signs are everywhere. The Lord has spoken several uh, things specifically uh, prophetically to me, and I don't know if you are, uh, you believe in prophecy and how he speaks. I, I won't go into it now. I've got a, at 345, we have an out class where I will mention some of the stuff. But I believe that you can position yourself now in a time where you have choices that you provide dip, uh, equip yourself to have choices in the future. The more choices you have, the better chance you have of living a life of dignity in any and all situations. And it, it, I believe it's a time where you won't actually need a helping hand, you'll be able to give a helping hand. And in those situations, if you need a hand, you're gonna be in a long, long line. Everything in preparation starts with planning. I don't know what's been mentioned so far, but uh, 
the number one question that you need to ask yourself or ask the Lord, I ask the Lord, how many people are we preparing for? How long? And, and if you get those two questions answered, for me, it was 20 people for two years. That's a lot of supply, but at least I had a, a number. It was, uh, uh, before I came up with that, nothing was enough. I'm a pack rat, and as I told in the lunch uh, uh, period yesterday, I became this hoarding mess. The fourth thing I did the worst was I found a good price on flour, so I bought 6,000 pounds of it. I mean, and I mean, I didn't know how to put it up, so I had these bags of flour. I mean, it, it was an ugly mess. They got rock hard. I didn't have an airtight container or anything, and of course, it went bad after a year. So I had to find a better way at that point, so I started studying it, and the Lord saw to it that I had uh, my sister, older sister, had a uh, food research scientist that lived right next door to her, so I, I had access to all the information that I needed at a, at a very early stage. Okay, go to slide. Uh, go to slide five. Yeah, on this. The, yeah, that's the key first question. Once you answer that, then uh, you, you uh, it's just simple math after that. A lot of times when you're starting down this process, you can really get overwhelmed and you really don't know what you don't know. So uh, there's specific questions, I think, that can take you down a basic trail. Go to the next slide, please. Now, just going through some of these. You, now, I know a lot of you live in the city. You say, well, I don't have much room to store. So you have to ask, how much room do I have? How much space will I need? After you go through the process of, of analysis of how, well, what you need and how many you need, then how much space do I need? Can you create more? What can you afford? I know some things over time you have to do it. You have to get on a regular processing plan. Then it's what do I eat? I mean, you go in a store all wheat or all beans. A lot of people think, I mean, back home, I've I have somebody, I won't give names, but they've ordered through us uh, 4,000 pounds of wheat, 2,000 pounds of beans, and they think they're done. They're not addressing anything else. And I mean, these, these are some big guys. I don't think that you're not going to be big like that unless you get through. Uh, if I, <laughs> I mean, you think you're going to make it on me? I don't know if they think, they, didn't, they don't have anything to cook with in alternative situations. They have no oil, yeast. I mean, it's, you just have to have a plan. And you, I suggest that you just get a planner. Uh, uh, Paul Williams' book uh, guides you uh, pr really well through the process of documenting what you use. So the, at, at its core, your best situation is to write down what you use and give yourself choices by by multiplying out how long a period of time and just getting what you use. That way it doesn't go redundant on you. You can just store what you use. I am real big on containers. The uh, I think the key to food storage is not the what, it's the how. And uh, as I spoke in my uh, product class yesterday, uh, basic containers are, uh, go to slide seven, please. Uh, basic uh, container information is they have to, to uh, be airtight, they have to keep out moisture, that, and they need to be cost efficient, they need to be space efficient, and I know a mentor of mine said that when your life is on the line, don't put it on the line with a piece of junk. So containers are not something to, to uh, really uh, be tight about. Next slide, please. As 
as this list shows, uh, it shows a number of different containers. Ones that, uh, the first several, the, the can, uh, jars, home canning, the Ziploc containers, the bucket and lids, uh, sealed barrels, and IBC containers are ones that I recommend. Ones I don't really recommend are the vacuum pack bags because they're too vulnerable. Uh, I used to keep seed in vacuum pack bags and just a little points on the on some of the ends of the seed can can poke little holes and break the vacuum and allow air to and air brings in moisture and so it can ruin the longevity of it. The uh, I don't know if you know what a tote bag is, but it's a little uh, just a kind of a big sack that holds two thousand pounds, but it's not airtight either. I don't recommend you store food and. And those are in 50, 25, 10, 10 to 25 and 50 pound bags. Those, uh, there again, they are not airtight or moisture proof. Um, and the other things, the saran wrap, aluminum foil and all that, I don't care if you're in a freezer or any, uh, or what you're putting your food in, they are not airtight and I don't recommend you use them. If you were to go to, uh, uh, um, uh, frame nine. We've got some of these IBC containers out there. Um, some of you might be familiar with what they are, but I am big on these. I mean, when you're when you're talking about food storage for um, either a long term or a number of people, uh, I love using these for uh, large amounts. Yeah, the equations are on there. Uh, when I first started storing food, I had 54 dry items that we kept, and a total of 1,300 buckets. Um, if I'd have known about these back then, it would have uh, shortened the time considerably. But uh, one of those equals 55 buckets full, uh, and they're, they're airtight. Moisture proof, so I, I highly recommend those. Um, go to the next slide. These show in, a, in our warehouse, we utilize these things big, big time. But in a little 15 uh, square foot area, we stack them three high, and you can have either 825 gallons if you're storing liquid uh, or uh, 6,000 pounds. It's really efficient space wise and you can move them full. We use those containers for uh, water, for fuel, for several kinds of food, for grain, beans, rice, or what have you. Uh, highly recommend those if you want to go. Some some people think that, well, talk to, to us regular people. We, we're not interested in storing NOAA quantities. We're not going to be feeding every animal on the planet or, or anything like that. So that's, uh, that may not be relevant for you, but uh, the Lord's called me to feed a lot of people. So um, go to the next slide, please. Um, it's been mentioned quite a bit about caves. So I just to uh, take a little mystique off of it, I wanna show a couple of quick pictures. Uh, this is the entrance to the one where we are. And uh, show the next slide, please. This is inside give you a look. It's like a regular warehouse. There's just pillars of limestone every 60 feet. It's, uh, okay, go ahead. This is just a picture of five gallon buckets. We highly recommend those for food storage. Totally airtight uh, and, and moisture proof. Uh, this, we, you can break down uh, for individual family use. Go to the next slide, please. Common food storage factors are the key is uh, keeping a, dual, uh, a cool, dry place. Um, underground is absolute best because like in the caves or in a basement or even uh, if you can uh, build a root cellar or, or create underground space yourself. Uh, any more than, than five feet underground, it's 58 degrees constant. At that temperature, if you can keep your stuff dry, food like grains will last indefinitely. I mean, 
there is even 3,000-year-old grain found in an Egyptian tomb that was still live and viable. It still sprouted uh, after 3,000 years because it was dry, because it was a, a, a low constant temperature. Um, garage, as the note says, is, is one of the worst places. A garage, a shed, uh, or anything uh, uninsulated without air and constant temperature is really uh, of the worst place for anything long term. Uh, you could actually, you could actually uh, die with a full belly from uh, nutrient value being totally gone from your food. Uh, the food can be good, but yet, I mean, it, it can be not actually harm you from eating it, but totally be devoid of, of, of nutrient value. Expiration dates on food are generally there just to help keep product moving. Uh, I know it's not uh, uh, necessarily appropriate out in, in, in the public world uh, as a salesman or product to really officially proclaim, but on a personal level, you really don't have to worry about expiration dates on a lot of sealed food. Now, that's not the case like in cereal and things that are in a, a box that can, can be contaminated or that, that, that air can get to. But canned goods, like uh, regular canned goods, uh, they, uh, if the food goes bad, the can will swell the only, the only other way it can go bad is if it gets uh, punctured or if rust goes through. If neither one of those things are pres present, then there is 99% chance that the food is fine. Uh, if it's been kept, there again, in a, in a nice uh, temperature, in a, in a nice environment, the food, you can, you can consume it. And you can it, it could have nutrient value long, long after uh, the expiration date is gone. I actually have uh, many, many containers of some avocado oil that uh, ex had expiration date of 2006, and it's still good. I didn't know of very many oils that that last a long time. I actually originally thought olive oil would last for a long time, but uh, it, it doesn't. I, I find out the hard way. I bought just a boatload of it. I had it in, in, I had it in gallon containers. I had it in 55-gallon drums, and I, yeah. And two years later, it was bad. So I, that's one of the mistakes I make that I hope that that uh, y'all don't. But avocado oil and coconut oil are two that I know of now. If you know of any other oils that, that will last and not go rancid, I, w I would encourage you to let me know. I would like to know. I'd like to, to let other people know about it. I have a gift uh, of being able to find um, good sources for things, to be able to uh, find things inexpensively or find big quantities or whatever. I for years, I was, uh, that was the business I was in. I, I would flip deals. Um, and so if you're trying to find a source for something that you, that you don't have, I'd encourage you to share it with me. I could probably, uh, through the relationships I have, find it. I'm talking about, it's just like with the, can, the regular canned goods that we have on display outside. Uh, I have a relationship with the cannon people where we get it for like uh, 25 to 30 percent of of what it is in the store and the stuff is, is is current production it's not like it's old or out of date or anything so I could uh, what I'm offering or saying we could do that with nearly anything uh, next slide please I, in a handout that I gave y'all, uh, I won't go through everything in, in exact detail. Uh, there's a lot in there. I'll just breeze through it. Uh, I'll cover it more when I have more time at the 345 session. But uh, there's the pluses and minuses to, to each type of food. There, I believe, 
Uh, when you're thinking about food storage, you not, need not just to think about numbers and where it is, but you need to have an overall strategy. And each one, it, I think, uh, is a viable, uh, the right tool for the right job. Uh, for me, uh, my interest is in, in getting people interested enough and not just food storage or not just looking at a, a three, uh, uh, three day, three week, or even a three month, but to look at a, at a lifestyle, it's a lifestyle change, and to uh, open people's eyes to the fact that, that there's things coming. Uh, Revelations in the Bible says that I believe we have some long-term changes coming, and, and to draw you into that, that it is possible that you can do some of those things like right where you live. There again, uh, at 345, uh, I'll show that even if you live in an apartment, uh, Grace and I, uh, when we, when the Lord moved us to Kansas City from the 300 acres, we were in apartments for five and a half years. And even then though, we got the okay of the people, uh, the apartment people to grow a garden in 150 square feet. So with just limited space, we grew it vertically to where we grew a tremendous amount of food in a little bitty space. I've got pictures of, of growing stuff vertically, 20, 21 feet up. And, uh, and I, I'll, I'll talk more on that about how we did it and, and what stuff will grow and, and all that. But uh, growing fresh in any long term, anything past one season or whatever, you have to think about growing fresh food to perpetuate your supply. And, and when you start thinking about that, you have to think about seed and seed strategy and, and so on. Tools, uh, you have to be thinking about uh, the right tools to be able to do that as well. Uh, canned food, whether it's uh, canned or home, it, it has a viable place. It's a way to get good food uh, that can last years there again, uh, constant temperature. It's not as important that it be cool as it as it is that it be a stable temperature. The more it fluctuates, the faster it le leaches your nutrients. Uh, dry in bulk. That's just the best way to get the most calories, the most bang for the buck. It's got to be part of any long-term storage. I I suggest that you don't buy grains though. In, in the in the cans or the long-term cans, uh, unless you're just buying just a little bit, you can get a, in other forms, bulk grains like uh, in in the bags, in the uh, totes, uh, and really uh, save a lot of money going and put them in either buckets or, or like I mentioned earlier, in the IBC containers. Uh, frozen, frozen is a big part of my strategy. Um, and you and you might say, okay, well, what about what about it if the electricity goes out? I also have a strategy for that. We do a lot of canning, have the capability of doing a lot of canning. So I keep enough jars on hand to whatever I've frozen to be able to can it right quick. I I keep an uh, a alternative cooking method. Um, we keep several uh, five-gallon cans of propane, and I have a deep fryer uh, burner that's used for an outdoor deep fryer, and that's the strategy to be able to fire up the uh, uh, pressure cooker. I have a, a big, uh, we've got one of them out there on display, actually, a 41-quart uh, canner that will do 19 quarts at a time as far as the canning that goes. I mean, it's really fast. It doesn't take any more energy than a small canner. Uh, most of the small canners, like a 21 to 25 quart canner, uh, uh, it's rated at 21 to 25 quarts. It'll only do seven to eight quarts at a time. So I, if a little's good, more's better. It's the, the way I live most of the time. So I usually go for the more, but uh, it doesn't cost that much more either. So anyway, uh, freezing, uh, like I said, is a big part. Uh, 
even freeze in your seed. You can actually uh, almost suspend the, uh, the, uh, the aging of your seed uh, if you freeze it. I actually have uh, two pallets of seed frozen that I have in the underground freezer that we have in, in airtight containers that uh, I've had it for three years. There again, I'll go into my seed strategy a little later, but it's, it is uh, for any long-term solution. I believe you have to, to have uh, a good seed strategy to the point, I don't know, have many of you read the book uh, by David Wilkerson, The Vision and Beyond? Why in this book, oh, we got one person, good. In the book, David Wilkerson ha has a, a vision from the Lord that uh, in 1973, he wrote the book in 1974, 65% uh, of the book has, has already come true, gives value to the uh, the 35 percent that hasn't but things still to come in the book that haven't happened yet is he talks about the collapse of America of the Europe economic system that would happen first then Japan then the United States and the rest would follow shortly after he talks about that silver and gold would disappoint because it would be so volatile due to manipulation of the markets and that land would be the only thing that would hold value and it would even multiply, dramatically multiply uh, wealth. Uh, uh, the land within 100 miles of any major city would uh, be so expensive, only large investment cartels could touch it, and it would be so necessary that people in the city would pull up sidewalks to plant on the ground underneath it. Um, with that in mind, I cannot stress the importance of seed. To, uh, to the environments that I, I feel that are coming. Um, dehydrated, freeze-dried food, viable place in food storage. I, I have about 200 cans of it. It's not my whole strategy, but I have about 200 cans of it that I'll leave in the cases because if I had to pick up and go, if where I was was broke down, the one, uh, there's a couple of things I would take. One would be the, my uh, freeze-dried food, and the other would be a good water filter. I like the little pocket filter, k pocket. It'll do 13, up to 13,000 gallons, and it, you can fit it right in your hand. It doesn't require any big container, big box, or anything else. It'll fit in a backpack. So uh, the dehydrated freeze-dried is definitely a tool for a job, but I don't count on it for everything. And after that, uh, I don't know if I've got it up there. I've, I've got uh, uh, covered foods, and I've even got like beer or wine. Or, uh, I don't know if you believe uh, in that or not. Uh, so that's, it's just one of those things that every now and then you, you have to have some semblance of, of, of real life as part of your strategy just to, uh, to refresh and encourage yourself uh, to, to keep going. It's like when things, what we're talking about is planning for some of the worst. And, and when times are the worst, you don't want to be in a position to have to barely scrape by. You want to be your best when times are the worst. There again, to lead yourself into the possibility of having the chance to be the hand giving help, not having to be in the long line needing help. Okay. Next slide. I believe you're at this conference. Uh, it's not not by accident. I don't believe in anything uh, that that is accident. I think everything is divine order. There are no uh, coincidences. I believe none of us that believe in God are, are, are called to be, have, uh, to operate in fear, to, uh, to have a, a, a victim mentality. I believe that we're all called to be victors, not victims. Uh, but it takes acknowledging 
that uh, the Bible's real, that there's things to be going through, and only by taking action can you get to a place to position yourself in a place to be there. I believe that uh, in the Bible it says that uh, a loaf of bread will be worth, no, it's not a loaf of bread, it's a quarter of wheat be worth a day's wages. I've got a 12-page study that shows, based on average economic, uh, in America, average wage being 800 a month, which is uh, a low, low, low estimate. But even at that low estimate, this study shows that food is going to go up 150 times what it is. Even on the Glenn Beck show, uh, he was doing a show exposing George Soros and, and a lot of the corruption involved, but there was a, he quoted uh, several instances of uh, the Institute uh, for Inflation. It said in the near future, a can of corn would be $16.51. A pound of coffee, $77. Uh, so it's just, I'm just quoting that to say that the, the, the subject is really viable. I think the part of transfer of wealth that is mentioned in the Bible, that the, 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 that, uh, the wealth of the wicked laid up for the just, I am convinced that, it, that the prime target will be through, through food. I think it's a bull market. In my opinion, I'm living life as, this, as if the Lord returns in 2028. That's my clock. Uh, the Bible says no man knows the day or the hour. Doesn't say anything about the month or the year. <laughs> and so that's how I'm living. And so in that line of thought, you know, that's not very many years. That's like 17 years. Uh, for food to go up 150 times in seven years, that is a huge multiplier. But that also means for those that acknowledge that the Bible's true, that you can take part and be part of a bull market like the world has never seen. Nobody can do without food. I don't care if you're growing it, I don't care if you're manufacturing, producing, storing, uh, or you have the answer to world hunger problems. There is economic opportunity, not just to be a, a benevolent handout, but to actually be like Joseph was in the Bible. My, my opinion is that the story of Joseph was not there just for a warm, warm fuzzy picture. Most people read that story and see a benevolent story, but I challenge you to look at it and really read it. The story ends up with everybody selling themselves into slavery to stay alive, and they were thanking him for it. I'm not saying we take anybody to slavery. I'm thinking, I'm telling you the real picture of what the Bible says is coming and that uh, you don't want to be in the position to have to sell your uh, everything you have, your animals, your land, and then end up being in a long line for a ham. It, uh, I think the Joseph story is a prelude to some of the things we're going to be looking at. Next slide, please. This is a picture of our apartment. It just gives you a little look at, this was one day's harvest out of 150 square feet. So I wanna stress that you can do something anywhere. You don't have to have, be able to go out and buy a lot of acreage, even although I think that you will, uh, you'll be glad if you do that. This is one economic, uh, uh, environment where I even say from a platform like this this is one in my opinion this is one period of time that debt can be your friend we have a huge inflation coming we have the dollar devaluating and if you put your money on on certain things land especially uh, rural land within a hundred miles of a major city I think you will see 10 to 100 fold return on your money in the very near future. The Lord told me that the grace period over cheap land would be up June 30th of this year. He told me that August 22nd of last year. So um, 
There's land available in a lot of places. I mean, an hour outside of Kansas City where we have our land, it's, uh, there's natural gas there. I got an email from Egypt telling me about a piece of property. I went and looked at it. Um, it, had, it had a four acre lake for a water supply, 4,500 square foot house with seven bedrooms, and it has a natural gas well straight from God's supply. And the land in the region is selling with mineral rights for 3,000 an acre. Now, I'm telling you, that is an hour from a major city, um, but those things are out there. I know in Texas that there are pockets of natural gas. There's natural gas, and with new methods, it can be found, uh, new supply can be found. But if you have a mindset to look for, if you're not looking for it, it's kind of like you don't know what you don't know. If you're not looking for it, and you're not, uh, you know, actually searching it out, you're not going to find it for sure. My people perish for lack of wisdom, or lack of vision, excuse me. So uh, I just want to challenge you to, to think new thoughts, to ask God to redeem your imagination, because you're only limited, your thoughts are limited by your life that you've already lived, but I think where we're going, it, 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 you need to be able to have, to blow the limits off, that you can be victors. I think chaos and, uh, and disasters and disruptions creates opportunity more than any other environment. So the statistics, uh, y'all probably heard it, but I quote it anyway. There are over half of the Fortune 500 companies were created, began during the Great Depression. So I... Uh, I want to just challenge you to, to, to pray that prayer, to ask for, uh, for God's thoughts. Take the limits off of the eyes, not to, to be able to see beyond your experience. Even if it takes somebody like me telling you to look for natural gas or whatever. Another thing on natural gas, new technology, I just found out about it. And, and Grace and I are going to do our vehicles this way, but for $2,500, you can convert your car to natural gas, but it's not a one-way trip. You can still burn gasoline. If you ever run out of natural gas, the technology will automatically spick, uh, uh, flip you back to, to regular gasoline. So you can have both worlds. For uh, $5,000, you can put a unit in your home that compresses gas, and fills your car up overnight. Now the, some of the units are half gallon uh, an hour, some are uh, up to two gallons an hour. And so, I mean, even if you don't have your own natural gas well, just using regular natural gas, you can, you can be energy independent. You can not have to be a victim. But if you have your own natural gas well, it's just totally, and looking at preparation, it's a game changer. You can uh, run a generator, you can, uh, with a generator, you really don't have to worry that much about water supply because you can pump groundwater. Um, and then to be able to run your cars on it also, it's just, it's just a game changer. So, um, I'm coming to closing. I want to mention uh, the fact that we have a drawing. It's probably been mentioned before. We have a a drawing, it's a $699 value. Uh, I do one-on-one -on -one consulting. Uh, before we actually talk, I, I have a uh, pre-qualifying uh, questionnaire to where uh, when we start talking, it, it's more on the lines of, of helping you identify where you are, uh, identifying uh, where you wanna go and uh, helping you to not make mistakes on how to get there. Well, this, this drawing is for a free consultation uh, to help accelerate where you're going. Uh, we at Prepare the Way have a uh, two-day conference that we're doing on August uh, 5th and 6th. You've heard uh, part of the team that speak at them uh, uh, at this conference. Rod and Glenn are part of that as, as well as others. Um, 
And I just wanna, wanna mention that uh, uh, out there on the tables that we have several uh, CDs, uh, teachings from, uh, from a three-day conference. That is actually the first big one we did back in March, but there was talks on uh, experts on energy. Uh, there was uh, uh, Rod and Glenn of it did uh, really extended detailed teachings on things. As well as I uh, breaking down things a little further. Um, a few of the products uh, that that we have here that I want to mention. Uh, I don't know if, if you've heard this before, but if you're a, a a beginner seeking to get up just a, a good foundation uh, of reference material to gain knowledge moving forward. Uh, four books out of everything that we cover and everything that I've read uh, that I would recommend would be the Dare to Prepare. Uh, no, it's five books. When All Plans Fail, to help you just go through the thought process. Uh, seed to Seed helps you sustain your food. It, it really, unless you've uh, stored some of your own seed, uh, there's things you need to know to really be able to do that in a viable way. And the square foot garden, it just gives you a really good foundational look at how to perpetuate a garden, even in doing it in ways where you don't have to do a bunch of tilling. It really minimizes the, the amount of equipment you have. And then The Vision Beyond by David Wilkerson is just a, it's a short read, it's a cheap book, and it's, and it's just something that I think it's good for God's people to be equipped with what he said in a, in a proven track record of where we're going. And then I, it's The Vision and Beyond by David Wilkerson. We've got a couple of hundred of them out there. I wish every believer had it in their hands. But if you know what's coming and you proclaim it to people, you position yourselves to be someone with answers. I believe the world follows two basic things that there's really short commodity it's a it's a really vacuum commodity and that's that is people with answers and passion passion so rare that like hitler even though people know it's wrong they will follow it to ruin because there's so little of it so Find what you believe in, just like Ramon helped this lady tell her story, like he, the, just the thought process took me to why I'm doing what I'm doing. This 11 year old boy that had to make house payments. Uh, anyway, if you have answers, people will follow you. They'll listen to the rest of your message. And that's what I'm trying to talk you into, buying into, taking for real, not just to look at this like, oh no, how are me and my kids gonna eat? I say your place of influence, your whole, uh, your whole sphere, your, uh, your phone book, those people that call you friends or that you even have a voice with, the times that are coming, you don't have to look at them as, as hard times. You have to look at them as a place of opportunity that you set yourself up for success. It's, it's like, for me, I've heard many times that wisdom is knowledge applied. Even if you have the argument, I've ha I have no money, well, I can't do anything. I know a lot of people that are called to big things right now are in a prison. They feel like they're waiting for God to, to write the check or to make the connection that takes them to the place where they can launch into the destiny. But even in that place, you can take the time to get the data bank of knowledge, read the book, read the square foot gardening, get the data in your head to where the Lord can use it. When you do get that breakthrough, that uh, monetary breakthrough or that connection or that launch into destiny, you don't have to take the time to read it then. I, I just, I believe right now is a time of positioning yourselves for extreme multiplication and for the place of opportunity. So with that, uh, I will, uh, I, I, I've come to the end of my notes. I know I talked more about mindset than I did about actually food, but I think at the core of food, it, the, you just sum it up, is 
Store what you eat and eat what you store. That's the same thing in gardening. Plant what you eat, eat what you plant. That way you minimize what you have to store. Uh, but this whole subject, uh, I think, begins and ends with what you have in your head. Preconceived notions, vision of the future, and your place in it and who you can be. And so that is at the core. That is at the core of my message, and, and it's at, at the core of the, what we're to walk out in the coming time. So with that, I give, uh, if you've got questions, I'll answer a couple. Uh, we have a handout up here, like I said, that, uh, that's handy. You got a question out here? Um, I'll go through them. Okay. The first one, the best resource out there, it's, it's expensive, but you get what you pay for. Dare to Prepare was the first one. Um, seed to Seed, the second. Square Foot Gardening, the third. When All Plans Fail, by Paul Williams has been speaking here, is a thing that it just lists items. It takes you through listing your items. It gives you a thought process of, of of analyzing what it is that you use so you can do the math and figure out how many. And then uh, The Vision and Beyond by David Wilkerson. One other thing, we can help you with bulk grains. If you want it uh, at, the, at the 50 pound bag level, if you want to buy it pre uh, done in buckets, or if you want the, the NOAA version, <laughs> the 2,000 pound totes and, and the in the, the IBC containers. We can actually help you with the underground freezers that we have. We can actually freeze the grain for you before it's even shipped to you. There's a fee involved, but uh, I wanna equip you and help you any way I can. If I need to consult you and tell you how, what, where, why, um, <laughs> any way, uh, prepare the way I can. I believe as God has set us up to be able to do that. So that I thank you and if you have any other questions go ahead and write them down on these cards up here there Terry's going to be at the meet the experts uh well, actually no he won't um, I'm doing another session yeah like, he's got another session too so no, it's, it's go ahead and give us your your questions here and we'll figure out a way or just personally see Terry I guess he'll, uh, he'll be your, back here the whole time worst case scenario yeah. if I'm busy and can't get uh, on the question put your email address yeah that's good um I'm going to make